Hey, Jens fans, we're back for yet another interview of our summer series. As always, I'm your host, Ty Comer. As you can hear, a little bit stopped up today. The allergies have come back here in Virginia, but uh, we're talking to a guy up in Maryland today. Today we have one of our coaches from last summer, uh, record-breaking team last summer. He was a big part of that. He came to us from Hood College uh, last year, uh, but before then he had a career 370 batting average at Washington College and was a three-time all-conference selection. In his coaching career, he spent time as an assistant at both Springfield College as well as Georgetown University. Uh, but not only is he a great athlete and coach, he's also got things done in the classroom. Uh, he's got his bachelor's degree in psychology from Washington College and his master's degree in sports psychology from Springfield. And he's currently the mental skills and development coach for the Corpus Christi Hooks, the AA affiliate of the Houston Astros. Please welcome Sean Canole. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me, man. I loved loved hearing from you. I was very excited to uh, hop on yet another Zoom and, uh, you know, answer some questions, chat a little bit, see what's going on with you, too. Absolutely, man. Well, we just had your roommate on from last summer, Tyler House. So Yeah, I'm man. I'm to get you on. That's a, that's a, that's a I miss that kid. kid. I miss that guy. <laughs> that's great. So how have you been, man? What's going on? Pretty good. Uh, just been in contact with a lot of players throughout uh, – you know, quarantine, and then while we're opening things up, we're just making sure that, um, you know, they're still working on their skills and any input that we can give them uh, just over the phone. We're staying in contact with them in that sense. Uh, and then from a coach's collaboration standpoint, we're, we're still having our coaches meetings, making sure, making sure we're educating ourselves with uh, a lot of different exercise science, uh, sports psychology, uh, overall fundamentals for the game of baseball. And, and different positional work so still working on that type of stuff at a distance but man I miss baseball I, I drove by the park the other day and saw some uh, team practicing and I had to stop and was like all right you know I, I need to get some live sports in me so I stopped and, and watched for a couple minutes and it was refreshing for sure, was for sure so did now when all this got started spring training had started so were you were you in full swing because I know you're with the the double a affiliate so I'm not sure if they had gotten yeah ready so we were all that we were all down there ready to ready to rock and roll the pitchers were already there pitchers and catchers were getting their work in I had about a week of spring training a little over a week mm -hmm. um and then the position guys started to come in they were getting all their physicals and I think that was like March 14th or something yeah and that's when the that's when everything started to turn on its head and you know, we, we had to make the best decision possible and, and send everyone back home. It was tough for the players. You know, they just they just all got in and everything just completely turned into a different monster and we had to send them back. For sure. Well, hey, man, uh, really glad to get you on. I always uh, enjoyed talking to you for a multitude of different reasons. But uh, one big one for me personally was that you're a fellow D3 guy. Uh, I went to Ferrum. You went to Washington College, had a great career there. Take me through your recruitment and how you ended up there at Washington College. Yeah, I mean, I always say the recruiting trail is like a two-way street. Some people are always thinking of like, hey, you know, come get me, come get me, come get me. But for me, the process, I really wanted to look at the school that I wanted to go to as well. I made sure I went to a practice. I made sure I went to uh, a couple games. I think I went to two or three games so I could see what the competition level was like. I could see if it was going to be challenging enough and if it was going to be a good fit where I'd get some playing experience. Um, I loved the campus. They had the major that I intended to uh, study psychology. And, you know, it was just, it was a historical school too. There was a lot of pride in being accepted. I remember getting my acceptance letter there and I was like, whoa, I was, I'm kind of surprised. Like they're a, a, a respectable academic institution um, so, that, I mean, that's the, that's the first reason why I wanted to go is because of the academics, you know, what if you get hurt your first year and, and you're not able to uh, play ball at all, like you want to make sure you're still at least getting a good education. Um, and yeah, I, I made sure I did an overnight visit as well. So I, had, I got to stay with some of the, the players on the team after practice, see what, you know, see what the dining hall is like, see what the dorm life is like, see what waking up the next day is like, and, you know, being in. Um, a situation where you have practice the next day again. Uh, so the whole process, it, it just kept checking off all the boxes. And it was almost a no-brainer for me. There, there was a couple other places, but I really liked their uh, competition level. They good young players, too. I remember watching uh, Ryan Normoyle play there 
on the day that I visit. And I was like, man, that's, that is some college speed right there. This is, this, this team's going to do well in the next couple of years. So with all those reasons, it, it was almost a no brainer to go to Washington. So you sat there and, and as a, as a big baseball guy, you sat there and you knew that the, the level of play at the D3 level uh, was good. Did you have any preconceived notions coming in and then uh, maybe talk about some of the misconceptions about D3 baseball too? Yeah, for sure. I mean, as a kid growing up, sometimes the only experience you get of college baseball is the college world series. Yeah. It's, it's on a lot more frequently now. I'm not sure if they showed uh, regional or super regional coverage before, but they've done a really good job of expanding their coverage of, you know, the, a lot of the different teams that go through the tournament but when you're when you're a kid you're like I mean that's it if you're not if you're not getting drafted maybe I'm not playing college baseball right but then I started to go to different games I started to play with a lot of players who were um, getting picked up by other schools they were older than me so I could see I could see how their process was going throughout the uh, recruiting trail and then yeah I made sure I went to a conference game too that was another thing I got to see like these are the games that matter. Like this is this is a big day for Washington. I think they're playing uh, either Dickinson or Muhlenberg, something one of those teams in our conference. And yeah, it it helped to understand the competition level because that that's a must win. Those games are very important. And then see if I could you know show up on campus and earn a spot. I knew I wasn't going to play right away. But I also remember I remember I showed up like a half an hour late to our first workout. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. And that was like, I, I remember going back to my dorm room, like, did I just ruin my college career by like <laughs> by showing up late and not being able to uh, practice on the first day? Yeah. They had me, um, they had me, you know, make, make sure I earned it and everything. I, I won't say exactly what uh, they had me do, but it was all legal. It was all NCAA. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's get that out there. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it, it took some hard work. I knew I wasn't going to just pop in there and be a starter. So that was another reason why I liked it because it, it kind of, it set me up to push myself. Yeah. Well, you had a great career there. Uh, you, you hit, as I mentioned in the intro, 370 there for a career, had quite a few extra base hits, uh, racked up a nice, I think 41 stolen bases as well, if I saw that correctly. Mm-hmm. And you just recently got named to the all decade team the uh, second team all decade and uh, talk about that honor a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was pretty special. It, it kind of came about nowhere. I didn't know that they were doing it yeah. um, a couple months leading into it. Once they started posting to Instagram, I, I follow their account and everything that goes on with that team too, because they got a special place in my heart. Um, then, you know, they made it all the way to center field and I was, I was proud enough to, to be out there. But I think the best part of it was, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps right now. thinking about it. The best part was, just having some of my teammates who I like grinded with, I freaking loved when we were playing together. They were smart. They were really skilled. They were such a great example of hard work. Um, I mean, our shortstop, Ryan Normal, like I mentioned before, exceptional athlete, good leader too. Uh, over in left field was Brian Baker. He is a ridiculous athlete and a great guy too. Loved having him as a teammate. Scott Matthews on my left over in right field. Great guy, too. I mean, just some pop that just kept developing year to year. That was great to see. Um, and then behind the dish, too, uh, John Rolowitz. So, I mean, there, there was just so many guys. I mean, I'm leaving a couple out but just just because of uh, time and everything. But <clears throat> that was one of the best parts, just having some of my teammates pop up on there, too. It was great. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's such that's got to be such an honor there with – you know, all decade team. There's a lot of players that go through schools in in, in those ten years. So that's uh, that's a that's a big deal there. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's let's jump into the Waynesboro aspect of this thing. How did you end up making it to Waynesboro? Yeah. So I got I got to give a lot of credit to um, the head coach at Hood College, Mike Impelletieri. He uh, was contacted by uh, the GM, and you know, hey, we're looking for another coach. We, you know, do you have anyone available? He forwarded me the email, and I was like, yes, Valley League, for sure. I want to be in there. That's a high level of baseball. That's where I want to be this summer. Uh, I called uh, Zach Cole and, you know, had our little baseball interview, even though it's not all, like, structured questions. It's, it, you know, we're just kind of talking shop and, you know, seeing what, seeing what we like about the game, seeing how we uh, like to play and how we like to coach. 
and yeah, just boom from there. Everything just kept working out well. I could see myself being a really good fit there just with uh, Zach's philosophy and uh, the history of the program too. Um, so it was, a, it was a quick process and I think it was, we both knew that was the direction that we wanted to go. So we, you know, we put our feet on the ground and we, we got moving right away. Well, we'll talk to Zach here soon. I'm sure we, we haven't been able to really match up with his uh, uh, schedule yet, but um, busy man down there in central. Florida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, so it, one thing that I always picked up about you talking with him is that when you guys first talked and, and you made yourself available, he said, that's got to happen because not only is this guy a great baseball guy, but as we came to find out, you're a great uh, strength and conditioning guy. Also, mental skills uh, are a big uh, tool in your uh, repertoire, I'll say. So I uh, was excited about that. Um, where did you get your passion for the strength and agility side of working with athletes? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, because it's so important, too, and it's, it's one of the areas that – um, sometimes it doesn't develop for me. It didn't develop until I got to college and was exposed to those, uh, collegiate level strength and conditioning programs. Um, so I got to give a lot of credit to our strength coach at Washington college, Johnny Jenkins. He is extremely passionate about <clears throat> developing athletes, making sure we have the best programs, making sure, you know, form is number one and then get your weight up. Um, he was always mixing things up with us too. We would have different styles of workouts. We'd be flipping tires one day, you know, pull ups and your classic strength the next day. So there was a, a, a real big interest that, that peaked from there. And they also did a really good job at Washington to um, <clears throat> increase their weight room in terms of size, in terms of um, budget, in terms of equipment. Uh, so they did really well, and, and you just learn so much, and you, and you just realize how much knowledge you're stacking on top of it. Springfield College was another great <clears throat> uh, source of information for me as well. That that's one of the um, you know best programs in Division Three, just in terms of facilities, uh, strength and conditioning knowledge, uh, access to sports psychology consultants uh, in their doing their grad work too. Um, so it was I would say those two areas really. I uh, had it take off for me and you know, yeah, it was, it was a lot of what I call me search, you know, research for myself of just always working out in college and seeing myself develop. And I was like, man, this is, this feels good to like get stronger. So it was just like that natural joy of, of improving. And then I started working with athletes and gyms and you can see a lot of um, transference between the weight room and the field. Sometimes when players are in the weight room, they're like a completely different animal. They're ready to get after it. And then sometimes when they get out onto the field, they're not as confident. And you're like, hey, let's make sure we're, make sure we're, we're pulling that mentality out onto the field. Like you're, right. you're killing it with squat, deadlift, and a lot of your other uh, movements right now. Like let's bring that confidence onto the field. So that was another favorite thing was that it helped me become a better baseball coach too because I, I started to understand speed, agility, all the angles. Um, generating power from your hips when you're when you're hitting or pitching um so that was another really big reason because i could see it directly helping my you know baseball coaching knowledge and skill right well we talked with tyler and uh a little bit earlier this week and uh you know he we talked about the pitching side of things obviously you were the position coach uh for us and uh worked with just about every aspect of the game other than pitching really um but still worked with those pitchers in the strength and conditioning so what in your mind made our team so successful last year? 32 and 10, I think, was our regular season record. That's, a, um, like I said, a record-breaking season, most wins in mm -hmm. a franchise history. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good question. It's really interesting, but it's definitely multifaceted. It's not like just one reason. It's not like, oh, we had, we had one great player. No, it was, it was everything surrounding us. I mean, like our, our owners, they were awesome. Like we, we stayed at their house – and they, they were so good with making sure that everything was covered in terms of, you know, meals after games and making sure, you know, the players had plenty of bats. Like all those things that you, that you don't want to worry about. Right. Like KK and Brent were awesome with that. So from a support standpoint, that really helps to have, you know, someone always having your back. You don't have to worry about the little things. 
the coaching staff, we get, we were, we were so good uh, together and we were so good at like making sure each area was covered. We all had our different strengths Yep. and we just stuck to that. Like we had guys who had playing experience in the Valley. So they knew those examples of, of playing. We had, like, I was a little bit more of like the science guy. So we had that side of like warming up the team and making sure we're getting good lifts and making sure we're eating healthy and then staying, like keeping our mind right as well. And then we had uh, Zach Cole with like professional baseball experience with, with, um, with T how too. So there, there were so many different areas that we were making sure that, that were covered that helped a lot. And then we just had great talent too. We had such good players on that team and with everything surrounding that, we made sure we had a good environment, a good platform for them to perform. So, I mean, there's, that's like one of the biggest things for me in, in sports psychology is like making sure you're getting the, um, the most out of your players performance and they're, they're at their, at their peak when they're, when they're with you. Right. So we, we're always trying to make sure we're, we're having them perform at the highest level possible. Um, I mean, we had some grinds too. There were, there were definitely some, we had a slow start at the beginning of the season. We had like a stretch where we had 16 games in a row or something like that. So there, there were some times where we were like, we got to dig deep, but you know, the guys trusted our coaching ability. They, they molded together. There was never a dull bus ride. Like you could tell, you could tell by that <laughs> within itself, like that your team culture is really good. If you know, you, you hop on the bus and you're like, Oh, it's three hours today not bad Whatever. like we're yeah. hanging out with the team these guys are great so that was that was another great part was our team culture was really good yeah definitely good stuff man I, I really enjoyed that team last summer but uh moving on to the current situation you're now the mental skills and development coach in the Houston Astros organization and we're talking a little bit beforehand uh that's not a, a, a title that you'll hear too often in baseball uh, both being on the mental side of things as well as the de de uh, excuse me development um, side of things with the strength and conditioning things like that so uh, uh, what does your job entail yeah great question um, I, I've loved the position so far I, I always say um, it's almost like professional baseball was like how can we get Sean Canola in here with us all right let's make this position because it's exactly what I love doing um, on the mental skills side we're making sure that we've got our guys um, conditioning their minds to make sure that they can um, put up with a long season, to make sure that they can put up with a quarantine right now, so, um, that they have the, the confidence in their ability and appropriate beliefs, checking off a lot of the boxes uh, from the mental side. And that's, that was, that's a combination of on the field and off the field, on the bus, when, whenever it's uh, deemed appropriate. So it's not just a, like – it's not just an office position where, you know, I, I sit behind a desk and, and, you know, evaluate guys or anything like that. No, it's, it's, it's very, it's very interactive and, and can take place anywhere, which I really like because, you know, that's a big part of coaching. Um, and then from the development side, we're making sure that we have uh, all of our guys from a defensive and a little bit of input on the offensive side, making sure that they have goals on, you know, how they're fielding ground balls, their arm strength, um, going throughout the season, other types of metrics to make sure that we're improving ourselves on the defensive side. Um, and then if we were in season, we'd be doing, you know, stuff like early work before games, going through drills, making sure that they're fine tuning a lot of their skills and they're still developing and, and that they see the development process as a big picture and not just a, you know, a one day process or anything like that. All right, man. So it's been great talking with you. Now, the thing that we like doing here, uh, we always like finishing with what is your favorite memory from Waynesboro? Wow. That's such a good question. Um, I think it was that one day when we, I think we, we stopped and we grabbed barbecue together as a team. And I think it was, it, it was going to be like an in and out type of, um you know dinner like hey let's do like a team function and you know we can, and for some teams like that's that's almost like the worst thing we're like oh man a team function or something like that yeah i just want to go home but everyone like everyone was like tossing frisbees and playing cornhole kicking a soccer ball around grabbing food hanging out with each other it was such an awesome environment and, and that's one of the reasons why we i mean it's tough to not say like a game i remember a couple walk-off hits and um, some wind streaks and, you know, some, some guys getting after it in the weight room. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that that time we had dinner. I'm trying to think of the name of the place. Um, Skipping Rock in like, Stanton. Yeah, Skipping Rock. Yeah, it, it was great. And that was just another great thing about playing in the Valley is there's so many cool uh, places to grab a bite to eat. Yep. Or so many places with like, whoa, look at this amazing mountain view out here. <laughs> That's another reason why I just love the Valley League in general. But it was, a, it was a sign that our team was really special and our organization was really special because we could just be around each other all day. We could, do, we could be doing baseball stuff. We could be doing barbecue stuff. It was such a great team, such a great organization. So that, that's one of the memories that sticks out to me um, right now. Yeah. Maybe, you know, 20 minutes from now, when you, when you think about a question again, you're like, oh, wait, that was a really good experience too. But, yeah, I love that summer. There were so many good experiences. Awesome, man. Well, hey, we are very lucky that we uh, got to call you uh, ours for a summer and uh, continued success with Houston, man. I'm looking forward to that. Not personally the biggest Astros fan, but <laughs> I'll be rooting for the uh, the mental strength for those guys. Just yeah, definitely. Hey, we got baseball coming back, man. That's it right. feels good. feels good. Sure. For sure. But, hey, big thanks to you taking out the time of your day. I know you got a few more Zoom calls uh, on the docket for today. So. Big yeah, thing. definitely, man. It was great, great talking to you. Great seeing you. Hope you Absolutely. guys are doing well. Anything you need, you let me know. All right, will do, man. Appreciate that. And keep working on that golf swing too, man. You gotta... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> plenty of time to do that this summer too. So, yeah, I've been uh, been playing a lot. So, That's good, all right, man. Sean. Big thanks, man. All right, take care.